Last part saw a bit of a revelation. It turns out the Dominion fleet that swept in to the battle over Bajor to aid us against the Herc was all staged. Odo had a Herc luring beacon draw them to Bajor in order to drag the Alliance into a fight against the Herc, allying with the Dominion against the threat that had already done significant damage to them. On top of this, we'd been led to believe by Odo that his fleet was the last of the Dominion. However, we encountered a much larger main force of vessels around the planet Karema, led by the female changeling. Odo has been playing his cards close to his chest, and now with the reveal that he intentionally endangered Bajor to draw us in, it raises the question of how much does he actually know? And can we trust him? After discussing the revelation with the senior staff, I chat with the other leaders to get their points of view. Quite the revelation, don't you think? It will be interesting to see how the powers that be respond to all this. For now, I think it's best to keep this in the purview of the diplomats. Let's return to our ships. There'll be more time to speak about this matter later. So Garrick wants this kept quiet for now, but pass it up the chain. Probably the best bet. But let's see if we can get a Dominion opinion, as it looks as if Loris and Wayun are in a heated argument. I'm surprised to see you here, Wayun. Aren't you usually at your Founder's side, hanging on her every word? It is a message from said Founder that brings me here now. She would remind you of your purpose, to serve the Dominion as a whole. So I was wondering- How kind of you to deliver the message in person. Thank you for your service. As for my service, the Ambassador shares his wisdom and guidance with me. Truly, he is a most benevolent god. Why should I not serve him? He is a founder, after all. Uh, hello. Serve the founders, yes. But also serve them well. Do recall the fate of your predecessor. She thought she served the founders well, quite possibly to the moment her unfortunate life came to its conclusion. As we both know, she was greatly mistaken. <clears throat> the same could be said for your predecessor as well, dear Wayun. Have you forgotten his sins? I know the Founders haven't. Hey, it's rude to ignore people. I need to talk to at least someone in here this that's going to make- This is a private conversation. Unless you're here on a matter of the utmost importance, I suggest you find someone else to speak with. Somewhere else. Okay. It seems like not everyone in the Dominion was in the know. It is not my place to question the will of the Founders. Your mind, however, is your own. Do with it as you will. But be warned, the Founders do not appreciate betrayal. If the Alliance withdraws from their pact with the Dominion, the consequences could be severe. Betrayal, huh? Well, that's a two-way street, as would be the repercussions. Let's see if we can get some clarification from Odo. I need you to understand that Bajor was never at risk. We took precautions. I made sure that my fleet was in position to neutralize the Herc in time. You saw the damage done to DS9. You know about the officers whose lives were lost in orbit, and did you know there were civilian reporters on the Enterprise F because we had to scramble so quickly to defend the planet? And what about Karema? The Herc even made landfall there. Karema was not my decision. Do you honestly think I'd take part in a plot to bring allies to our side, and then move to wipe out another group of allies? As I said to Garrick, there is more to this than we know. I'm going to find out what and why. I hope you're inclined to join me when the time comes. I'll admit those two actions don't seem to add up, but I also didn't see a link between Bajor being attacked and the timely arrival of aid. With our displeasure voiced, we return to the Armager and set a course back for the wormhole to repair and await the next stage. Garrick then contacts us in private. Visits to the Dominion are always so enlightening, don't you think? I suspect we've just begun to discover what the Founders are playing at here, and that concerns me. Greatly. After today, the wrath of Captain Kira may be the least of Odo's concerns. I do feel we need to continue working with him, however. It may be the only way we learn the true intentions of the Dominion. With that in mind, I'll contact you when we're ready to move forward with his plan. 
Fair enough, Counselor. I'm going to report this to Fleet Admiral Quinn and we'll see what he wants to do with this, however. We're stuck in this fight now, so resolutions will have to come when it's finished. Be seeing you. This sort of action will probably be confined to the highest levels of command and we'll probably be ordered to not speak openly about it aside from with those in the know. But the thing is, I can see Odo's position if he truly believed the Dominion was as bad off as it originally seemed. If he was in the dark about its true strength, maybe he would have been desperate enough to resort to drawing us in through duplicity. The bigger issue I have is why use Bajor as the target. It definitely did the job, but targeting just DS9 might have produced the same results with less risk. Over the next few days, we engage in several more missions to push back the Herc, some even at Odo's request, and it's a never-ending battle. We operate from DS9, using it as our hub, and spend some time chatting with the other powers that be. However, none of them mention the revelations. There will always be a part of me that misses the joy of creation I found as a simple tailor. Crafting robes for Klingon wedding parties, getting Morn to hold still during a fitting, working with Betazoid silk for Ambassador Troy. Ah, the memories. Really, it was so much cleaner than politics, and less people wanted to bury a knife in my back. Still, we don't all get to choose our destinies, and I'm sure that Cardassia has reaped many benefits from my sacrifices. I did a video on post-Dominion Cardassia which covered Garrick's career and how he ended up a counsellor, but suffice to say it's difficult to assassinate someone who knows all the tricks, and probably wrote some of them. As for Odo, we find him sharing his knowledge base with Constable Roe. <laughs> it's nothing short of a miracle that Chief Roe hasn't locked Quark away for good by now. He's lucky I'm not still the station constable. He'd be in facility 4042 instead of loafing around on that moon he swindled from someone. So you used to be chief of security here, correct? Why the term constable? It was a title given to me when I was chief of security here. Archaic, but often fitting, considering what I had to deal with at times. I understand the tradition has continued, despite Chief, uh, sorry, Constable Rose protests. <laughs> She'll learn to live with it, just as I did. Well, you'd be surprised what we could all learn to live with. The Founder has no need of you right now. Oh. What about now? The Founder has no need of you right now. Okay, okay, I get the message, I'm going. After what seems like an eternity, Councillor Garrick does finally contact us. Odo's found something intriguing in the Masan system. Something the Founders want no one to know about, even one of their own. That certainly piques my curiosity. I'll meet you in the Masan system. Odo wants to travel incognito this time. I trust you'll be able to deliver him and that surly Jem Hadar bodyguard of his to the Masan system intact. One more thing. I've taken the liberty of informing Captain Kira, and she'll be joining us as well. 
after the Karema incident, she's taken a personal interest in high-level Dominion activity, particularly where Ambassador Odo is involved. We board the Armager once more, and this time with Ambassador Odo, Captain Kira, and Dukan Rex in tow. We head out first, just us on the USS Armager, to the Masan Sector, a remote area in the Gamma Quadrant, deep in Dominion space. However, our alliance should leave us mostly unharassed as we delve into our, our former adversary's territory. When we arrive, we find a dormant Dominion battle station, the only notable feature here amid at the asteroid field, and from the initial telemetry, it's not seen some action in a long time. I only recently learned of the station here. It's very old and very well concealed, even from Vorta and Jem'Hadar. From what I can tell, the Founders studied alien life here, including the Herc. We may be able to recover useful tactical data on them from the station's computers. Ah, well I can see the interest. However, we can also clearly see uh, there are several Dominion warships here too. We can ask Odo if he expected to see them here. No, and that concerns me. This is supposed to be an abandoned facility. Take us into comms range and open a hailing frequency. Let me do the talking. I should be able to make any Vorta or Jem'Hadar fall into line if things get difficult. Depends who's in charge. So far so good. They're not targeting us. Yeah, let's hope they don't have orders to open fire on any vessel that enters this system because uh, they'd unknowingly probably kill one of their founders. So this station seems to have one discernible docking ring. And when we hail its guard, they respond. Entering the Dominion systems without authorization has become a bad habit of yours, one I have grown weary of. You've shown a singular talent for annihilating the Herc. I suggest you return to that before my patience with your insolence expires. I think you find my talent for annihilating things is not singularly isolated to the Herc. However, we should be careful. The female changeling does have us outgunned, and she is notoriously ruthless. Best to turn this over to someone who can speak to her on equal footing. The Ambassador. Take it away, Odo. There's no need for this posturing, Founder. We're here on official business under my authority. See? We're here in the spirit of mutual cooperation and part of the- Odo, Atlanta. it seems to be a day for defiance and bad habits. You do not have the authority to grant access to this system. It is restricted to all but those of the highest level, a level you do not possess. Now then, I suggest you leave immediately. No, we need the intel that's probably on that station. If you don't mind us- Fire to disable. What? Odo must not be harmed. Hold fire, I will not be the first to initiate aggressions here. However, what was originally a warning shot soon turns into a full salvo. Dominion forces, this is Councillor Garrick aboard the Tain. Cease hostilities. Consider that your first and only warning. We must protect the Founder. All ships, disengage! You certainly know how to make my days more interesting. An ancient Dominion research facility, guarded by the leader of the Founders? A cloaked fleet pales in comparison, but it's the best I can add to the mix. You know, you're becoming predictable because I had a feeling you were shadowing me. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. The fact that the Founder was willing to fire on one of her own speaks volumes on this station's worth. I look forward to discovering its secrets. Since when does the Founder stand guard duty, Odo? Oh, Kiri, you beamed back to the Defiant. She doesn't. Let's find out what she's hiding. We don't have a lot of time. We may have held off the Founder for now, but she'll be back and she'll bring friends. Let's get down there and find what we came here for before every Jem'Hadar in the Quadrant shows up. I couldn't agree more, Captain. Why don't you and the Ambassador join the away team while I remain on guard with my fleet? Why? I thought you came here for answers. Are you sure you don't want to join us down there on the spooky abandoned mystery rock? On any other day, I'd be the first 
to beam down. However, after the Karema incident, I believe both the captain and the ambassador need to discover the truth of this station together. Call it a trust building exercise. You, uh, you did say that on an open comp. You know what? Fine. That's very diplomatic of you. Captain Kira makes a good point. Let's get this over with before it gets even more complicated than it already is. So this station seems simply to be built into an asteroid, which would help to disguise it. I wonder what we're going to find down there. We're reading a habitable system and minimal power, but everything looks operational, just old. We know that the Herc are ancient too, so perhaps the Dominion has data from before their return. Right now we're operating only off of what we've gathered, and ancient Klingon myth about the former invader species from which they took warp tech. <laughs> and those myths are from the days of Kalis, so they're spotty at best. Looks like the station's running on auxiliary power. We've got life support, basic lighting, not much else. If we're going to get anything useful out of this relic, we'll need to get the main power back online. Stay vigilant. We have no idea what to expect here. Investigating our beam in sight, we've apparently set foot into a storage room. There's nothing important yet. But from that exchange with the female founder, it does seem that Odo may be sincere on his position within the Dominion, that he doesn't have the full picture either. That earns him a modicum of trust back. With main power down, the eerie gloom and cold temperature make for an uninviting environment. Searching through all this is going to take a long time. Time which we do not have. The female founder is probably not going to let this intrusion slide, and she has already proven willing to risk Odo. We're going to need to access the computer systems to make this search go faster, which means getting power back online. We ascend a walkway to find a pillar with a lit terminal. From here we're able to reactivate the station, however it seems all this ancient gear has a lot of systems all wired together. It'll take too long to untangle a manifest from everything else, so we grit our teeth and reactivate everything. Well done. Main power is back online. We'll be able to access other systems, including the data core. Let's find an access console and see what's in there. Hopefully the data files aren't corrupted beyond repair. A conveyor belt has activated too, and it's similar to the one we encountered years ago in another Dominion facility, one that produced Ketracel White. With the lighting on, we can see containers with ornate handles that also resemble Jem'Hadar white casks, seemingly corroborating this. We progress along the same direction as the conveyor and find ourselves emerging into a very long corridor that reads as many different rooms. Some of them are locked, and some of them aren't. Well, so far nothing's stopped us. Let's have a look, but carefully we might have reactivated some defence system too, you never know. This room appears to be some form of office. There are numerous desks here with various systems of computer interfaces around them. It seems we have entered into an administrative wing or something. Good, this is where we can find information. Hmm, this terminal is in poor shape. None of the files are accessible. Considering their age, I'm not terribly surprised. The founders wouldn't keep a place like this hidden to protect dust and broken files. Let's check all the data terminals and consoles in the area. That one over there looks reasonably intact. We'll start with the big one. Research report 4121.63, Dominion Reckoning. My fellow founders, the Masan Research Station is fully operational. As we continue to add worlds to our sphere of influence, our studies of xenobiology become more important. We must know all we can of both friend and foe. We need every advantage we can find if we are to achieve true dominion. Our Primer project is underway. You'll recall the recently discovered race of tree dwellers, hunted as we once were. Genetic engineering of these salads has produced considerable results. Their intelligence has increased by a factor of three so far. We predict the species will be the first of many loyal servitors and vassals. She's talking about the Vorta. The date she gave was nearly 2,000 years ago, not long after the Dominion was founded. This facility's older than we thought. 
much older. That correlates with what we know of the Vorta. This station is so far what Odo suspected it to be, a research outpost. Research report 4653.15, Dominion Reckoning. Our scouts have discovered an interesting species of solids at the edge of the Dominion. They are a species of sentient insectoids that live primarily underground. We may not have detected them were it not for a thorough geological scan. Aha. Uh -huh. Initial studies have revealed that these solids are based on germanium. I've attached bioscan data we collected on them for your review. I've dispatched a research unit to study these borrowers further. They may be just what we need for the military initiative. Oh, I don't like that. Burrowing sentient insectoids. Germanium-based. Hmm. She must be talking about the Herc. Judging by the date, the Founders made first contact with the Herc nearly 2,000 years ago. Okay, so that date was only a few decades after the prior one, if my maths is correct. So they discovered the Herc back then, and then what? Studied them? With aims to incorporate them into a Dominion military. Like precursors to the Jem'Hadar. We enter into another room, which seems to be a loading bay of some description, and after a quick sweep, we continue to delve into the logs. Research report, Dominion date 7021.27. More data has arrived on the cadre species 484 designation, Burrows. Their world's unusual orbital path has taken it out of the habitable zone. As a result, the borrowers have retreated underground and entered a state of hibernation. While dormant, a smaller servital race tends to the borrowers. They also maintain their shared habitat and technology. I've instructed the field team to take advantage of their dormancy period, and they are now conducting aggressive studies of these intriguing solids. Interesting. My team initiated first contact protocols with the borrowers prior to their mass dormancy. They found them to be friendly and intelligent, if not willful. We've identified a common element in their food supply. Manipulation of this element may prove useful in subjugating them. Herc is intelligent and friendly? Unbelievable. It sounds like the Founders made first contact with the Herc in order to find a way to conquer them. It's like Quark says. The bigger the smile, the sharper the knife. So their hibernation process was tied into their survival in non-habitable conditions. That's neat and a little obvious now, I say it out loud. But it does seem the Dominion were intent on weaponizing Research them. report 7903.01, Dominion Reckoning. Cadre species 468, designation Jem'Hadar, is a massive success. They will be the strong arm of our Dominion. Guided by our cunning, brilliant Vorta. The toil of these vassals will allow us to spend more time in the link with those we hold most dear. So soon after they started experimenting with the Herc, they had success with the Jem'Hadar. She sounds proud. The birth of the Jem'Hadar, as seen through a Founder's eyes. Interesting. No mention of the Herc, however. Their designation number was lower than ours. They were our predecessors. Perhaps something went wrong? Something that led the Founders to reject and abandon them for a different species. Us. Could just be that the hibernation process is unavoidable in their biology and they needed an army that they could use all the time. I noticed there was a massive time gap between the discovery of the Herc and the creation of the Jem'Hadar. Centuries, it seems. So the Founders had a lot of time to do something to the Herc. Research report Dominion date 8183.67. The burrowers have emerged once again, and in a hostile state. They have taken to the stars, moving from sector to sector, attacking anyone that crosses their path. Their goal is not one of conquest, but of consumption. They leave nothing but dead worlds in their wake. This is after the Jem'Hadar's creation. Though we do not understand their newfound savagery, we have found a use for it. When the burrowers set their sights on a world, we offer the inhabitants a choice. Those that submit to our Dominion rule are defended by the Jem'Hadar. Those that don't 
serve as an object lesson to others. Ah, that is a tactic we have seen before, very recently, with Kurema. Hey, join the Dominion. We'll help, but never leave. So, the Founders have been using the Herc to manipulate others for some time now. Bend the knee to the Dominion, or we'll stand back and let them ravage your world. Only now something's different. Something's changed. They can't keep the Herc in line with the Gemmadar anymore. And we're all paying the price. Yeah, it sounds to me... This is just speculation. Like the Founders did something to the Herc that uh, may have driven them slightly insane. Research Report 8532.38 Our scouts have returned from a wormhole expedition. The solid races on the other side are primitive and unremarkable, save for one. They are called Klingons, and show a singular talent for violence. One that rivals our own Jem'Hadar. Left unchecked, these savage creatures could become dangerous enemies. While the Klingons are too willful to subjugate, their genetic material could produce viable cohorts to the Jem'Hadar, or their replacements. We have begun development of a new cadre species, designation Thakiri using demons from Klingon folklore for inspiration. As with Jem'Hadar, we have bound them to our service with the White. We will test them in combat on the Klingons themselves. That's heavy. Research Report Supplemental Entry 8671.71 Dominion Reckoning Somehow the Fakari have broken the hold of the White and turned on their rightful masters. Most of our research team were killed. Intelligence reports suggest a union between the Fakari and a Klingon warlord known as Mular. Perhaps this will lead to a state of mutually assured destruction on Kronos. One can only hope. The Fekiri demons from Klingon folklore are real. Damn. So it would seem. Only they lost control of them. Despite the use of Ketracel White, based on what we know about Fakiri, it seems the price they paid for their freedom was insanity. They became the monsters they were based on. Hale here is a little spotty on Klingon issues with Fakiri. Kind of skipped all of that, being a temporal agent. It's considered mostly a Klingon issue after all, but in summary, a high progressive species recently attacked the Klingons and is kind of still around. We'll delve into them before the next series, but until now, it was unclear exactly what they were dealing with. Research Report 9076.23 Final Entry I am weary. Soon I'll return to the Great Link, and I will be glad to be rid of this place. The borrowers have emerged again. We can barely control them this time. The Jem'Hadar were able to divert their onslaught at great cost. Rather than counterattack, they went through the wormhole to seek easier prey. Our agents in the other quadrants report that the burrow assault was a sweeping one, going as far as Kronos. Hopefully they'll devour every atom of that wretched planet. The burrowers will eventually return to dormancy. Strangely, it appears that some of their forces intend on remaining in the other quadrants. It seems they have a long-term goal. Galactic devastation. So if Klingon myth is to believe, that was around the 4th century. So the Herc followed what, the Dominion supply chain all the way to Kronos? Yes. They knew the Herc problem was getting worse even then. Instead of preparing or seeking allies, they expanded the Dominion. And when the Herc re-emerged, they tried to deal with it on their own, and failed. Their arrogance may lead to the end of the Dominion. We need to get this data to the Alliance, all of it, even the damaged and corrupted files. There has to be information we can use in here. Oh, definitely. This this is valuable history as well as vital intel. I'm picking up something on my tricorder. There was a massive power spike on a lower deck, and now I'm reading a large number of systems cycling up. Something's happening down there. Ugh, oh dear. It's probably got something to do with all the buttons I was pushing. My bad. Agreed. Take your team and Captain Kira down to investigate. I'll remain here and pull as much of the data as possible. We won't get another chance at this. Right. We won't be gone long. Don't hurt yourself in the meantime. 
So that's a hell of a lot of Klingon history that just got substantiated. Let's recap. The Founders made the Vorta first over 2000 years ago. Then they uncovered the Burrowers and over centuries did something to them, experimented on them perhaps. That's currently a blank spot. But then they created the Jem'Hadar and disregarded the Herc instead, just using them as a scare tactic to further build the Dominion. Then they uncovered the wormhole around the 3rd to 4th century and began exploring, making it as far as Konos, where they set up shop and harvested Klingon DNA to make the Fekiri, masking them behind pre-existing Klingon mythology. Unfortunately, despite their control tactic of Ketracel White, the Fekiri broke from the Dominion and allied with Molar, the tyrant and ancient rival of Kalis. Not long after, the Burrowers re-emerged again, this time following the Dominion into the Alpha Quadrant, then to Kronos, where they then attacked and were also defeated by Kalis, seeding more Herc germanium eggs along the way on numerous other worlds. Meanwhile, the Klingons, the feisty buggers they are, named the Herc the Herc, outsiders in their tongue, and stole and reverse engineered their warp tech. But by then, the Dominion had just given up on our quadrants and retreated back into the Gamma to further build their empire. And all of this faded from history, the only records being the tales of Klingon warriors passed down in legend, prone to hyperbole and the bias of retellings. And that's where we get the Klingon lore of today. More importantly, we now know that the Founders made the Fekiri, and it seems to be they are the reason for the Herc's aggression, although we're still missing a piece for the full picture. That will have to come later, however, as this episode is running rather long. Having said that, I think we're pretty much done here. I doubt there's much left of Revel. Well, shit.